Hey, I got a special guest for everybody today. We got Zach the Crash Bukia, who's going to be fighting at Shamrock FC 280 coming up on December 3rd. How are you feeling today, brother? Feeling really good. Got some good pad work in this morning. Uh, off to some hard sparring here in a little bit, and it'll be a good day. And what have you been really focusing on so far in, in this fight camp? What are you trying to like sharpen up with your tools? Um, not one thing in particular. I try to stay well-rounded, and my opponent's well-rounded. So uh, just being ready um, with a few things that, that I feel like are working for me right now um, and just staying really sharp, uh, that's, that's really it. A lot of my diehard MMA fans have been watching you for a while now, and you like to finish a lot of your fights. When you usually go in there, are you looking for that, or does it just happen? Um, I, I, if, if I, I never felt like the referees were... Or not the referees. Uh, the judges were a friend of any fighters. Like I, yeah, I, uh, I definitely prefer to go for the finish. I'm going for the finish uh, every second of the fight. Um, I may have only won a, a few that were by decision. Uh, most of them, most of my, like almost all of my wins are by uh, submission or knockout. Yeah. So do you like watch a lot of footage on your opponents, or are you guy that kind of likes to shy away with that? I mean, I was interviewing. Uh... Uh, Dan Severn last night, and he was saying, you know, back when there was, like, no holds bars, you didn't find out who your opponent was until, like, the day before. And, you know, nowadays you got YouTube and all these things. Are you, like, into that? Do you like getting a lot of information on your opponent or? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I always I always study up on my opponent to know what they're uh, they're good at. Yeah. Um, and uh, the kinds of things they tend to do, what are some of their uh, their tendencies are and things like that, what, what maybe are their strengths and weaknesses. But... Really, uh, you got to be ready for anything because um, everybody's going to develop after each fight and become different people. They're going to adapt to the way that you fight in a different way. So you got to be ready to uh, just adapt uh, as the fight goes on. And uh, so a little bit of both, I would say. So I don't want to have a hard set game plan where if that doesn't work out for me, then I won't know what to do. Like I'm ready to, to, do, uh, to adapt to anything. And you've been fighting for a while. A lot of us watched you on that Gina Carano card with, with Cyborg. What was it like being a part of that experience? Uh, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was awesome. I mean, that was my first big show. Obviously, I was uh, honored to be uh, even a part of that undercard. Uh, it was really cool. Really cool to see uh, that, that uh, epic moment for women's MMA and uh, watch them go at it. It was, it was pretty cool. In 2016, man, I've been saying it a lot on the podcast lately. It's just been a great year for all promotions, not just the UFC, all promotions. You're talking Bellator, Titan FC, Shamrock, Valor fights. Everyone's doing amazing. I mean, you've yeah. been fighting for a while now. What have you really seen uh, change between the fans when you first started to the fans now? Like uh, the support that you see for, for MMA and, and the fighters. Yeah. Well, I, w I went pro in 2007, so it's been like it's been a it's been a big gap. It, it was kind of crazy um, getting involved in MMA in the first place uh, before before even the first Ultimate Fighter uh, show came out. That's when people started really. Then then uh, next thing you know, everybody you're walking down the street and there's people with tap out shirts on, which yeah. was crazy to me because when I first got into it, I thought there's no way this will ever be, you know. Uh, globally recognized as a, as like a, a, a full thing. I thought we'd be uh, kind of keeping it underground for a long time. I'm glad it did. Uh, obviously, it's been great. It's been a really cool process to see it um, evolve and grow and become like a real, true global phenomenon. Uh, it's it's so different. It's hard to even uh, describe. But what have you been up to lately, like going on in your personal life? I know there's a lot of holidays coming up here in America. We got fans all around the world. They know that we got Thanksgiving and that uh, what we like to do. What are you going to be doing uh, come Thanksgiving? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to get a lot of good training in today. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I went back. I'm coming back to 170. Uh, 155, I just felt like I was way too depleted. Um, and it just wasn't – something just wasn't uh, firing right for me. Uh, I'm really excited to get back there. So that's that's a big gap, 15 pounds. And um, I'm uh, like between 155 and 170. It's a really big difference. Um, I've been deliberately keeping on size, so I'll be able to actually enjoy the holidays, the holiday a little bit. I'm going to have to get on it um, right away after that. Obviously, I'm going to get some work in tonight.
Are you going to spend it with your training partners and coaches, or do you have a, a family and little ones at home or anything? Yeah, now that I'm back in uh, my hometown here in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, uh, yeah, I have I have uh, family out here now. So uh, this is where I'm originally from, and I'll be spending uh, the holidays with them. So what was that like growing up in Kansas? I've never been to Kansas. I got listeners in Brazil, and I really like asking fighters, like, you know, what was it like growing up where they're from? Like, what stands yeah, out about uh, Kansas? Yeah, uh, Lawrence is Lawrence is a different town, very much different. I mean, there's no reason why you would know it, but uh, it's not real, real big. But uh, it's kind of like a little. Uh, it's almost like a mini Austin, Texas, or or tiny San Francisco in the middle of Kansas, which is really weird. We're not on the middle, but on the um, eastern edge of Kansas. Very different, very artsy. Um, it's really uh, it's really a cool little uh, college town. I love. Um, I love being from here. I love it here. That's why I came back in the first place. I got to travel a lot. I spent a, almost a decade out in California. I got to, you know, got a lot of a lot of cool places around the world to go train and stuff like that. And eventually, I just had to realize there's no place like home, just like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so I had a fan question for you from the Pure Evil Army. When you first started getting into MMA and it kind of, uh, you know, started gaining its uh, its footing, um, who were some of your inspirations coming into this sport? Uh, there was a lot of big, I mean, coming up, like, it just depended on what part, like, one of my favorite fighters of all time, uh, is Ginky Sudo, um, just because he loved, loved fighting so much and just had a good time with it. Um, a lot of the, uh, old school pride fighters, I was really, really liked Fedor and, um, Vandalay, who I got to train with for a little bit out in, in uh, Los Yeah, Vandalay, of course, everybody loves him. Um, yeah, a lot of the old school pride fighters and, of course, a lot of the, the old school UFC fighters too coming up and, and some of the new school ones too. There's still, it just keeps growing and evolving and everybody keeps getting better. There's, there's uh, too many to list really. So a lot of the news that people have been talking, or a lot of the debate that people have been talking about lately is when fighters have been coming in overweight, like nine, nine pounds overweight and the penalties that they have is like a, a 20% on their purse. Oh, but when they go into fight, you can clearly see that the weight advantage, if they have nine, eight, nine pounds on them, a huge advantage um what uh do you think they should do about that do you think they should do it like take a point away in that first round or do you think you know just the the money aspect is fine but clearly there's a there's an issue there with uh you know the weight in that very first round yeah that that's a hard one i mean giving them a point that's huge i mean yeah. they're in a, in a 10 point must system with with three rounds that's that's huge huge so to, to do that I mean, I don't even see why somebody would agree to that, even if they were the one that would, didn't even make weight. That'd be that'd be uh, that'd be a hard one to pull off. I think. Um, I don't really know what right? what the it's a tough one, right? Hard to, yeah, because like nine pounds is a lot. I understand. I understand that with a couple pounds, like if they just did everything they could, they're a couple pounds off. They feel like there's no way they could cut those last few, whatever, dock dock their purse. But once it gets to like past five pounds then you're looking at a pretty major advantage you like watching fights yourself like outside of you know doing your own thing have you always been like a fan of the sport on on uh you know watching events outside of just the ufc like all events yeah 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 as much as i can it's, it's hard there's so many now there's hard to keep up with all yeah. of them uh but yeah i'm, I'm like i'm i always want to watch stuff um I really like watching, you know, like Glory, and whenever I would get a chance, like to watch the kickboxing events, or, or just, or just uh, stumbling upon fighters and just looking them up. Really, is what I like to do. If I find a fighter that, like, I just there's something about the way they move that uh, I want to study or learn from, I'll just kind of look them up and just go back in the archives and check out as much of their footage as possible and see what what it is that's working for them. That uh, that really maybe I could take something from. Well, another big thing about 2016 is the fighting aspect. Not only do you have to be a fighter, but you kind of got to be an entertainer as well. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can look me up at uh, Zach Crash Busha on Facebook. Uh, same thing on uh, as my Twitter handle. And that's, yeah. What can people see on there? Like, can they see like your 36 second knockout or can they see any of your uh, past fight videos or do you keep in touch with any of your fans? What, what's going on there on that Facebook page? Yeah, uh, I got to post some videos and stuff like that. Uh, some of the, I'm not sure if I would be able to post some of the more recent fights that were on uh, UFC Fight Pass. I don't know if there's any kind of 
thing about um, posting the full fights on social media or anything like that. We're working on, um, we've got some um, video people that have been coming down to my gym a lot recently and are going to be doing a lot more bio kind of stuff with some of my local fighters at Lawrence Fight Club here, That's and awesome. including me. So, so people can be looking forward and, and looking on there for for that kind of stuff here coming up. Uh, it's just going to take some editing. We just started doing this. My gym's new too, so it's just been a, a process of uh, getting that kind of thing up. But uh, yeah, be looking for that out soon. And as we get towards the end of the interview, what I usually like to do is I hand the imaginary microphone over to my guest. And if you have any shout outs, any, uh, anything at all that I missed or you want to get in there, uh, the floor is now yours, brother. Yeah, uh, Lawrence Fight Club obviously is uh, is uh, where my gym is. That's coming up if you're in the area at all. Um, we, it's at uh, CrossFit Lawrence as well. Uh, shout outs to my coaches, Shannon Woodward, Kelvin Tiller, uh, Thomas Thatcher for strength and conditioning. They've been really uh, crucial to my recent development and uh, ever expanding my knowledge in the sport and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, Sucker Punch Entertainment, of course, my management company. And, yeah, that's it. Well, I appreciate you coming on Pure Evil MMA. I cannot wait for December 3rd. Good luck with your fight, and we'll be talking with you soon, brother. All right, sounds good. Have a great night. Yeah. So there you go, guys. That was the man, Zach Crash. Bukia, 15-8 and eight with 21 total fights. Four wins by knockout. He's got nine wins by submission. Always puts on an amazing fight. I cannot wait for this. He has a 30-second a 36 second knockout you know he doesn't like go into the decision like he just clearly said there and his last you know six fight he, he's like four and two out of them so very exciting fighter i can't wait for it make sure you guys stay tuned because tonight i'm going to be talking with ted check we got some more fighter interviews on the way so subscribe down below we're going to be doing this all night i think i got two more interviews lined up and then at 10 p.m eastern time me and Ted Check will be talking for our weekly Wednesday show about all the latest MMA news. And there will be an open chat room if you guys want to have anything to say about it. I will see you then. Make sure you guys subscribe down below. And most importantly, behave yourselves for at least an hour.